And I am an older mother. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, we adopted Molly because, well, okay, I'll tell you, because women, we always tell strangers intimate details about our lives. <laughs> We do. And I couldn't, I tried to get pregnant, but I couldn't. And it turned out that when I was younger, I'd made some mistakes. And I'd spent too much time in jacuzzis. And what had happened was that I had, um, I had accidentally hard boiled my eggs. <laughs> so sad. And Martin and I discussed surrogacy. I went to a doctor and he explained the procedure very thoroughly. He said, what I'm gonna have to do here is take the eggs out of a young girl and fertilize them with your husband's sperm. And Martin said, wait a second, why, why do you have to take the eggs out? <laughs> so we adopted, yes we did. And I used to worry about being an older mother, but you know what, you can share things with your child that you can't share when you're younger. I, I remember that very special day when we both lost some teeth at the same time. <laughs> and that very first picture she drew of me, I said, Molly, I love it, it's so special. Maybe next time you could draw mommy's breast just a little higher, that'd be nice. <laughs> there are other reasons it's good to be an older mother. Um, Molly said, Mommy, when did you get your ears pierced? And I said, when I was 13. And she said, well, I want to get my ears pierced when I'm 12 because I want to do everything one year younger than you. I said, okay. She said, when did you get your first cell phone? I said, when I was 47. <laughs> She doesn't need a mother because she has a phone. And Siri, who lives in the phone, is very smart, much smarter than her mother. I'm not too fond of Siri. Let me tell you what Siri did to me. The first thing Molly did was ask Siri, who is Rita Rudner? And Siri said, Rita Rudner is a comedian who was born September 17th, 19. I said, turn Siri off now. <laughs> but she didn't, and Siri kept talking. And Siri said, Rita Rudner is born September 17th, 1953. And I'll wait while you all do the math. <laughs> Raise your hand when you have the answer, yes. And I had been lying to Molly and to the country. <laughs> and USA Today didn't find out, and Entertainment Tonight didn't find out, but Siri knows people. <laughs> And Molly remembered, and Molly said, Mommy, you said you were born in 1955, and Siri said you were born in 1953. And I said, well, I guess I'm gonna have to tell you the truth, but please keep it to yourself, because not many people know this, but, but Siri has a drinking problem. <laughs> My mother was a terrible cook, really. Even I knew you didn't put fabric softener in meatloaf. It was embarrassing. In school, when we traded lunches, I had to throw in an article of clothing. <laughs> but she kept trying to, and before she died, you know what? She got a cookbook published, under fiction, but still. <laughs> and uh, my mom passed away. My mom passed away before my dad. My dad wanted to die first, because he had something funny to write on his tombstone, and he was that kind of guy. He wanted to write, as usual, I'm waiting for my wife. <laughs> and my dad almost died like a month later because he couldn't find anything to eat in the refrigerator. And uh, then he got married again and my stepmother started to feed him. And then you know what, she died too. I know it wasn't, uh, it was natural cause, causes. It, it wasn't a Dateline mystery or anything. <laughs> seen that Dateline mystery? If the wife is dead, it's always the husband who did it. The big mystery to me is how they make that show last an hour. <laughs> but time, time is marching on. I need glasses. I don't wear them, though. I find it much more interesting to see a shape and try and figure out what it is. <laughs> I have to admit, I've petted a few fire hydrants. 
but as an older woman, I have a few complaints. Um, sometimes I feel ignored. I got an unsolicited phone call the other day. I usually hang up, but I stayed on the line because the voice on the other end said, we're looking for the opinion of women of all ages. I said, well, well, all ages. I'm in that demographic. <laughs> they said, are you 18 to 29? I said, no. 29 to 39? I said, no. 39 to 49? I said, no. They hung up. <laughs> but that's only in America. There are some countries where older women are worshipped. Only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's difficult for older women to get on network television these days, too, unless you're doing an advertisement for either osteoporosis <laughs> or incontinence. <laughs> that being said, I do have an opportunity coming up next year. I'm not counting on it, because it's still not for sure. I still have to figure out a way to get shingles. <laughs> advertisers because advertisers only want to appeal to people in their 20s. They think people over 50 have no money, and we do. It's just that we keep having to give it to people in their 20s. <laughs> but she's in the 10th grade. High school's almost over. It gets so expensive. Luckily, Martin and I thought ahead, and when Molly was a baby, we, we put away some money for bail. So, <laughs> What am I going to do the, the day she leaves the house? It's going to be excruciating. I was talking to my friend Cindy about it, and she said, you know what, Rita, don't worry, because college is only four years, and then they come home and they live with you for the rest of their lives. <laughs> because she has a son. Wait, do you, what do you hear? He went to Ivy League College, came home, lives in the basement, and he's a bouncer. Not at a nightclub, he just has a ball and he likes to bounce it. <laughs> and there are gonna be no jobs anyway. I mean, what's Molly gonna do? I was trying to think what the world is gonna need in the future, and I think what Molly should be is a tattoo remover. Because a lot of people are going to be happy with the decisions they made in their youth. And some people are going to say, you know, I like French toast. I don't know why I seared it into my forehead. <laughs> and there's so many things I don't understand about young people. Maybe you can help me. I don't understand the clothes. Young boys' clothing is getting looser and lower. Young girls' clothing is getting tighter and higher. Saw so a young couple crossing the street. He was wearing a blanket. She was wearing a blindfold. <laughs> Here's something I'll never understand, the pierced tongue. And I think strange things, I can't stop myself. Like, if they take it out and then they eat soup, does it fall through the hole? <laughs> and it's always young people who go into body piercing, I might have figured this out. I think it's because they haven't experienced a lot of pain in their lives yet. You never see a 90-year-old person wake up and say, you know what I'd like to do today? <laughs> Just as a present to myself. Punch a hole in a tender organ. <laughs> and I know, I know tattoos are all the rage and I would never get one, but you know what? Luckily, on my left leg, I have a vein in the shape of a ship. I don't understand the music. Madonna's music used to be shocking, but you know what it is now? It's elevator music. I was in an elevator. I heard, like a virgin, touched for the very first time. What's elevator music gonna be like in 30 years? Got something itching in my pants and it's swinging to and fro. But I can't scratch it, my shorts are too low. For your enjoyment, that was performed by the Mormon Tabernacle Choir.